thank you, Natalie, and thank you, thank you for joining this webinar wherever you are. Um, you join me from Hull, which is in the north of England, I'm sitting in my office, and I'm going to try and give you some tips that might help you in preparing a research proposal. They're quite general tips, they're quite general things that I've learned through too many years of too many failed but some successful applications. So as, as you've heard, it's really crucial before you apply to actually make a decision to apply. And to decide to apply, you really should check the eligibility criteria. Are you eligible? If you're not eligible, don't spend the time writing an expression of interest. But if you are eligible, then great. Then be honest with yourself. Do you have a good idea? Is your idea strong? Do you have supporting data? And crucially, does your idea fit with the topic, which, as we've heard, is all about the mail this year? I'd recommend nobody putting in a grant proposal on the effects of maternal obesity this year. You then want to check whether you can do the research. Do you have the skills necessary? Do you have the equipment necessary? Do you have the team in place? Do you have the facilities? Because if you can't do the research, you probably shouldn't be requesting funding for it. And link to that, do you have the support? Do you have the support of your institution, whether that's your clinic or your university? I've already mentioned, do you have the equipment necessary? And do you have the necessary collaborations, if indeed you do need collaborations? If you can answer yes to all of those questions, then get writing, have a go, put an application together. <clears throat> As you've already heard, the, the application process for the SRA grants has two phases. First of all, is the pre-application or the expression of interest phase. The expression of interest is quite a short document. However, my advice to you is actually write your full project, write it out in detail, have a good idea of what your project is and condense it for the pre-application. Don't start small and then try and expand if you're successful at the expression of interest idea phase. You really need to start this early and really need, I think, to have a good idea about what your project will be. Being positive, being bold, I'm going to be successful. Start your conversations early with your team and collaborators. Make sure they're all on board. But also, especially if you're working with some big names, make sure they can all commit to what they're saying they can commit to and within the time frames. You really don't want to be starting writing this or getting feedback on this two or three days before the deadline. So really be clear with the time frames that you need yourself and your colleagues and collaborators to work with. Check again now that your idea does fit with the call. Spend some detail, spend some time reviewing the um, documents on the SRA website, making sure that now you've got a fuller idea of your project, which will have evolved as you'll have been thinking about your idea. Does it still fit the call? And I'm going to drop an extra line in here. Start thinking about the budget. Start thinking about the fund. Can you do the project that you propose on time and on budget? If you're going for the bigger grant, that's €200,000. And if you're going for the smaller grant, that's €75,000. But can you do what you're planning to do within that money? Because it's very difficult to propose a big project and then try and scale it back. And you end up cutting corners. And that really does come at the detriment of the research. Send time to start writing. <clears throat> this is general feedback for pretty much anything you'll ever write, but certainly for any funding proposal. And this is, this is the, the cycle that I've worked through. I start a draft. Remember that good writing starts with bad writing. So start writing something, write your draft, and then get some feedback. Get feedback early on from your team, from your collaborators, from your colleagues. But if possible, get some external feedback. If you've got colleagues who aren't directly involved with the grant, but who you trust to give you really good, honest, robust feedback, then do that. Get that feedback early. It's better to have the criticisms before you submit the project so that you can then address them before you've gone out to review. On the basis of your feedback, rework your proposal and go around that cycle two or three times, making sure that you have the strongest project and the strongest expression of interest that you and your team can put together. Once you're happy, submit. And it goes without saying, make sure you submit before the deadline. You really don't want to miss that deadline by an hour or a few moments after you've done all this work because, as you've heard, if the grant isn't submitted before the deadline, it won't be sent out for review. And then wait. 
my advice, forget about it. Try and put it out of your mind. Get on with the next grant proposal. Get on with the next paper. But just wait while it goes through this anonymous review phase. As you've heard, last time around, there were 71 applications for the larger grants and 40 applications for the smaller grants, and 10 of each were selected to go forward. That means the majority of expressions of interest that were submitted were unsuccessful. It's easy for me to say this, but actually it's quite hard for me to say this because this happens all too often. Don't get too disheartened. Many excellent proposals won't get selected. There is a limit to what ESHRAE can fund. There is a limit to what any funding agency can fund. If you do get any feedback, review it. Can you use it for improving your applications elsewhere? Because nothing that you write is ever wasted. If your idea is good, then seek other funding. Look for national funders, look for international funding agencies, maybe charity or industry. There is sadly no magic formula for getting a grant funded. And even the most successful researchers will have many more grants unsuccessfully funded than those that they get funded. If you are successful, <clears throat> congratulations, well done. Remember that many of those, many excellent proposals didn't get funded. But again, have you got any feedback? Can you review, use that feedback to improve your application? If you are successful at the expression of interest phase, then it's time to start writing the, the grant proper to really start getting stuck in. And at this point, I would advise, read what you said you would do, because that time has elapsed and you'll be unfocused on other things. So go back and read your expression of interest in detail and go back and think about that bigger project proposal that you drafted at the start. <clears throat> it's now time to start your main application. It's time to expand the plan of the project. But if you've thought about the project in its broadest sense, you should have a lot of this all prepared. So it's a case of now refining it into project speak. I read projects, I review projects, I write projects. And the questions that I look for and the questions that I try and address are what, why, why, and why? What is your research question? What is the question that you are trying to answer? Crucially, why is this project important? Why is this question important? Why should this project be done now? Why is it timely? Why is it relevant? And why should you be doing this project? What is your track record? What confidence can you give the funder in your ability to deliver the project? And what confidence can you give the funder in your ability to deliver the good value for money? Because an investment is being made into you and your project. And that's the way to think about it. It is an investment. So try and think about these questions and try and think about leaving your reader, your reviewer and your funder with very clear answers to these kinds of questions. So I'm going to use a bit, a bit of an analogy for the funding proposal. I'm going to use the analogy of going fishing. OK, so the first part of going fishing is having a hook to catch your fish. The hook of your grant proposal is the summary. This is the key crucial part. And this is the part that the reader is going to read. First of all, before they read the whole proposal, they're going to read your summary. And the reviewer will subconsciously make a decision about their view of your project on the basis of the summary. So you have to get that summary right. Catch the reader, get them interested, get them wanting to read more. If your summary is hard work for the reader to read, they're less likely to look at your grant proposal favorably. Having your summary of the clear messages, it may not be completely obvious, but by the end of your, your summary, your reviewer should have a good idea of what the question is, why this project is important, and why now. And keep returning to these central points throughout the proposal. Keep returning to the hook. You then need to write the background. This is the thing that holds your hook together, the foundations of your proposal. What is the hole that your work will fill? What is the gap in our knowledge that your work will fill? What is the new treatment, the new development that's going to help patients? Expand on those details. Why this question? Why now? And why you? Why is this the time to invest in this project? By the end of your background, if it's written effectively, your reader will know what you want to do, but more crucially, why it is important. And then think about your objectives. Well, if you're going fishing, the objective of going fishing is to have a tasty meal at the end of it, a nice piece of fish. When you think about your research proposal, think about your objectives. What are the objectives of your research proposal? 
number them, objective one, objective two, and so on. Make them clear, achievable, and measurable. Can you demonstrate that you have met each of those objectives? And ideally, you would like your objectives to not be interdependent. If objective two relies on objective one working, that puts reviewers on edge a little bit because what happens if review objective one doesn't go quite to plan? Does that mean the whole project is out of is blown out of the water? You really want to try and make objectives to an extent independent and not codependent on each other. And again, by the time you reach the end of your objective stage, your reader should know exactly what you will have accomplished if this project is successful. There should be no doubt in the reader's mind. And then the methods. How are you going to go fishing? I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to go and stand in a river and try and cast my rod and try and catch some fish. How am I going to tackle my objectives? Link your methods to the objectives. To address objective one, I will use these approaches. To object, address objective two, I will use these approaches. Describe how you will design your study. Who are you going to do your research on? Is it participants? Is it patients? Is it samples? And what are the practical methods that you will use to do this research? Again, giving very clear, very direct confidence in the reader that you can do these methods. Ideally, in an ideal world, a grant proposal should have some evidence that you and your team, between you, have effectively used all of the proposed methods in some way. If in a proposal such as this, you say that you're going to go and use, for instance, CRISPR, but you've never used CRISPR technologies and methodologies, that's quite a risk for the funder. Whereas if you are an expert in using CRISPR, the funder will be able to think, actually, that team are very good at using that method, so we don't have to worry about whether they will achieve it. So in some way, you really want to try and demonstrate that you have some experience of all of your proposed methods. Think about limitations and risks. In the case of fishing, the, the seabirds may come and shoot, steal the fish. In the case of your grant proposal, there are some limitations and there are some risks. All research has limitations. Try and acknowledge them. Try and be honest about what they are and demonstrate that you know what the limits of your research are and why they aren't a major issue. And again, ideally, you'll be able to demonstrate, for instance, if the risk is methodological, that because you've got experience in the methods, you can counteract all of those problems. And again, to give the reviewer and the funder confidence, demonstrate that you've thought about the risks and what you're going to try and do to minimise them. We can't remove risk from life, but we can try and reduce the effects of them. So try and give that some thought and let that come through your grant proposal. Think about the likelihood of any risks and the impact. So is something very likely but of low impact or something extremely unlikely, but if it were to happen, it would be of a significant impact for the project. Consider that and try and consider how you would overcome them. We want our research to have an impact. We want it to have a result. In the case of my fishing expedition, I want them to build a monument to the fish that I'm going to catch. That's the impact. In terms of research, what is the impact of your research? Why does it matter? Why is your question, why is your project going to matter? And who will feel the impact? Will it be patients? Will it be other scientists and clinicians? Or will it be the wider public? And what I would say with the impact is, whilst it's important to consider the impact of your research, try and be realistic and try and give measurable examples of how that impact will be shown. So don't say you're going to cure male factor infertility if you can't demonstrate that you actually achieve it. Also, don't say you're going to cure male factor infertility if it's not feasible. With regard to your impact, try and make it feasible. And think about how you will realise your impact, how you will deliver on it. So, for instance, if you say your impact is to help patients, don't then say that your sole way of sharing the results of this work is in human reproduction because most patients don't actually read human reproduction. You may need to think about other ways that you can share the impact of your research. <clears throat> you may want to think about adding, the val adding value to your research proposal, and we've talked about teams. In my experience, science always works best in collaboration. Rather than standing there on my own with my fishing rod, it might help me to get a friend who's got a boat. 
Similarly with your project, it might help you to bring in colleagues and collaborators who can enhance your skill set, who can give experience and maximise results and outputs. But when including collaborators, make sure that it's a cohesive fit. Make sure that if you are putting a team together, you can demonstrate how the team will work and what value over and above you working on your own, the team brings. We work in what can be viewed as quite a contentious area of research. So it is wise to consider the legal and ethical aspects of the work that, and how that sits within your own region where you're carrying out your research. Address these legal and ethical aspects clearly. State what the ethical impacts are, consider them. Don't pretend they're not there. Again, personal advice, it's always worth it, if possible, to show patient or public input or opinion in your research. Do the patients think this question is important or is it just something that I've dreamt up in my lab? You will need to demonstrate that the research that you plan to carry out will be in accordance with whatever frame, regulatory framework is necessary for the region in which you're conducting the research. And in that regard, I really would recommend you work with your institutional legal department to review the grant terms and the conditions. Does this fit with what is required? The budget. You are asking for money, you are asking for an investment. You have to demonstrate how that money is going to be spent. Work out the costs appropriately and effectively. Wherever possible, agree these with your institution early. Start thinking about what those budgets will be, including what we refer to as on costs. So for instance, if you plan to employ a researcher on your project, you need to think about all of the costs associated with that researcher, not just the salary. And again, really think and be honest, can the project that you are proposing be delivered for the budget that you are requesting? Because there is no more money and you really don't want to run it short of budget before the project is completed. The problem with grant proposals is there's never enough space to get in all of this information that I've said you really want to try and get through. But there are, there is an important role for annexes. And it is really worth spending time on these important aspects. Don't focus solely 100% of your efforts on the application form, because your annex is the place to show your Gantt chart. Your Gantt chart will give real confidence to your reviewers that you've been very thoughtful in your, how you're going to deliver and manage this project. Your work plan. And if you have any supporting data that gives confidence that you can deliver, place that in your annex as well. And then when you've done all that, <coughs> Try and put it down for a night or two. Try and take a breather from it and then proofread it. Find all those typos, find all those errors, find all those sentences that don't quite make sense. And then go through that, re that review cycle again. Get some colleagues to proofread it and review it. And try and give yourself good time to submit. And all I have to say after this is if you do choose to submit your grant proposal, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you.